Great Hera, I was created by a man. No, Diana, you weren't created by a man. You were created by a man in crisis. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Wonder Woman Creators in Crisis In this special edition of the historical Men and Women in Crisis series, I am going to be talking about Wonder Woman creator William Moulton Marston, his wife Elizabeth Marston, and his mistress Olive Byrne. All video footage used in this video is under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and in conjunction with my commentary. Now the first historical man in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Dr. William Moulton Marston. Now Dr. William Moulton Marston was a brilliant American psychologist who invented an early prototype of the polygraph or the lie detector test, and he also created the psychological theory known as disc theory. And later on in life, he created the iconic DC comic superheroine, Wonder Woman. Unfortunately, Dr. Marston wound up becoming a man in crisis due to his support of dysfunctional ideologies and being participating in a sexually deviant lifestyle. Now, Dr. William Moulton Marston was an avid supporter of feminism, and he was not supporting women's rights because he wanted to see women go out here and be empowered. No, he was supporting women's rights because what he wanted to do was create a covert contract with feminists, hoping to get a pass for his sexually deviant behavior in exchange for him standing up to support women in getting their rights. Now, Dr. William Moulton Marston, as he was married to his wife, Elizabeth Holloway, and had a polyamorous lifestyle, which he had a partner, Olive Byrne, and in that relationship, William Moulton Marston was sexually involved with both Elizabeth Holloway Marston and Olive Byrne, and he was also sexually involved with another woman who lived with them occasionally, Marjorie Wilkes Huntley, and with William Moulton Marston, he was involved with all three of these women at the same time. Now, this polyamorous relationship was sexually deviant because he was, again, in, not only involved with all three of these women, but all three of these women were involved with each other. And this is diametrically opposed to polygyny, which Ringo talks about in many of his videos, because under polygyny, the man goes out here and makes all of the women he's involved with his wives, and all of these women have the same esteemed title of being a wife. Moreover, mo all of the women are involved with the man sexually, intimately with him, one at a time, and they are not participating in an orgy altogether, where he is naked with all of these women together at the same time, and having sex with the, all of these women at the same time. That is all part of sexual deviancy and not part of polygyny, because, under again, under polygyny, there are rules for the relationship, and under the rules, again, the while the man has multiple wives, all of the wives share separate rooms, all of the wives have separate spaces, and all of the wives, again, are with the man intimately one-on-one, -on -one, and all of the wives have different duties under the leadership of the husband, and all of the wives, again, are wives and not a wife and a series of mistresses like William Moulton Marston was participating in. Now, William Moulton Marston was one of these guys who was well deep into sexual deviancy and he was into sexual deviancy and this sexual deviancy basically undermined the success he could have had as related to his overall career. Now William Moulton Marston could have been a very wealthy man had he gone out here and looked to patent his inventions as related to the polygraph where he wanted to measure systolic blood pressure to see if someone was lying. 
Unfortunately, William Moulton Marston being a beta male did not want to take any sort of leadership role and he did not want to take any sort of responsibility as a man and did not want to take credit for anything. So what he did, like many manginas or beta males go out here and do, is look to say, oh, these inventions belong to the public, when this could have been a way to generate wealth for himself and his family. Moreover, William Moulton Marston really did not want to take a leadership position in his home, as he was involved with all three of these women, and as he was involved with all three of these women, he looked to abdicate his role of leadership and stewardship that was given to him by the Most High when he married his first wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, and instead looked to abdicate and give his wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, all of the power in the relationship. And this is something that beta males love to do. They love to abdicate power because they don't want the responsibility of power and they don't want and because they don't want to take power and control in the relationship what they do is give all the power to the women because they are afraid of taking their natural masculine power and that's one of the things William Moulton Marston had as related to his life in the secret world and this is one of the things that he, the only place that he felt like he um, he abdicated, you know, had power was in the secret world. And this is why he was looking to, again, give his wife power in the real world in their relationship, but wanted to, again, have his power in the secret world as related to sexual deviancy. So William Moulton Marston, again, was a major sexual deviant, looking to, again, have sex with multiple women at multiple times and look to sleep with multiple women in the same bed. And again, this man had really, again, deviant ideas as related to sex and a lot of, and all of those deviant ideas that he was participating in the secret world, all of this led to things coming to a head as related to his academic career. And as he was having his academic career, eventually people found out about his sexually deviant relationship with these with his wife and these other women and this is what led to him winding up losing his job at the university he was working at Tufts University and after he wound up losing his job he wound up where where his wife was working to take care of the family and his part and Olive Byrne was also working by writing articles in Family Circle to help take care of the family. Now, I found this to be interesting that Olive Byrne was writing articles in Family Circle because Olive Byrne and Elizabeth Holloway Marston were in an alphabet relationship and they were in this deviant relationship with William Moulton Marston. And you had these women talking about traditional women and talking about giving advice to traditional women all while they were participating in this polyamorous lifestyle and taking care of their of the four children between Olive Byrne and Elizabeth Holloway Marston. Now, as this was going on, William Moulton Marston was in the background of his entire family, and as he was in the background of his entire family, what William Moulton Marston was doing was falling further into um, a decline and he, while he was appearing as a salesman in ads for Gillette razors using the polygraph as a motive, he was still trying to create a career in entertainment and wanted to go out here and start creating a comic book that featured a heroine, but he wanted to feature that heroine a, a, in a story that allowed him to be able to promote his ideas of sexual deviancy. Now, William Moulton Marston, as he was creating Wonder Woman, used his side piece, Olive Byrne, as the model for the character and took ideas from his deviant ideas of marriage, such as the bracelets he had them all, had his wife and his, and his side piece wear. These were they're supposed to be the symbols as related to Wonder Woman's bracelets and the costume of Wonder Woman I found, sadly, from the movie Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman actually came from bondage and sadomasochism and pornography. So the roots of Wonder Woman were not about the liberation of women and empowerment. No, this was another part of William Moulton Marston's covert contract with society where he would be able to go out here 
and give people on the surface a comic book heroine, but uh, but but under the surface would be in the undertones of the story be able to explore his ideas of sexual deviancy and promote his ideas of sexual deviancy on to children. This is something that most people didn't know about William Moulton Marston, that he was, again, looking, while he was out here promoting the idea of a so-called strong heroine, was looking to, again, promote his deviant sexual ideas and promote his deviant sexual ideas through the character of Wonder Woman. Now, William Moulton Marston said that he wanted, he believed that women were more honest than men in certain situations and could work faster and more accurately, but it's clear to me that he really did not understand female nature. And again, yes, some women can go out here and appear to be more submissive, and but they are not more honest than men. And I talk about this in depth in my book, Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, that many women lie, and oftentimes they lie all the time. So they are not more honest than men, and a lot of times they wind up putting up facades, but sadly he couldn't see this as related to things. And as he was out here writing his essays and trying to appear intellectual, he was out here looking to go out here and again promote all sorts of deviant ideas, all under different narratives. But one of the worst that he did was under the narrative of the Wonder Woman character, where he looked to promote the idea of a so-called strong heroine to women known as Suprema, the Wonder Woman, but the whole thing was he wasn't looking to promote the idea of a strong woman again. No, he what he wanted to do was go out here and create this character so that he could project his deviant ideas and promote his deviant ideas to children. And again, he was one who said that, oh, girls don't, uh, don't want um, not even girls want to be girls because our feminine archetype lacks force, strength, and power. Not wanting to be girls, they don't want to be tender, submissive, and peace-loving like good women are. Women's qualities have dis are despised because of their weakness. And this really shows me that William Moulton Marston never really understood women. No, he didn't understand that men and women are different and that girls do want to be girls. But the what makes a girl strong is completely different than what makes a man strong. Yes, a man is strong physically, but a woman has a lot of great mental strength as related to her character, and it is her strength of character that makes her attractive to a man because it's her internal strength that balances her with a man. This was something William Moulton Marston didn't understand that I learned and understood from living with a lot of great great women in my family and it's something that i explore in contrast to william moulton marston with many of my characters like isis esteem and matilda crowley and lilith graves the strength of a woman's character and again william moulton marston thought women needed to be like men and this shows how deeply entrenched he is in feminism and as he was creating the wonder woman character he wanted to create a woman who could be as powerful as a man. And as he looked to create this woman who was going to be as powerful as a man, sadly, he wound up taking a lot of young girls on the road to becoming women in crisis due to the dysfunctional ideas he promoted about women. And again, he didn't really understand that, again, men and women have different strengths and different weaknesses. Yes, women are physically weak, but they are mentally strong. And again, that's why they have strong character to have the discipline and resolve. But he didn't understand this. And again, did, wanted to go out here and try to say that Olive Byrne and Elizabeth Marston were strong women, but they were some of the weakest women who took women further down the road to becoming modern women in crisis. And as he developed Wonder Woman, he came up with the idea of an all-female utopia. And as he came up with this idea of a female utopia, I just did not work because again female nature is completely different and female nature is completely different because women don't work well together because women are emotional moreover women get jealous of each other and compete against other women for the attention of men but William Moulton Marston didn't understand this because he was a mangina in crisis and because he was a mangina in crisis 
He really didn't understand that women, again, do look to work with men and be partners with men. And that's just how women naturally are because God made women to be the help meet to a man and look to serve men. And the whole idea of a woman being a powerful person that can dominate and subjugate men, this is something that comes from beta males. And again, William Moulton Marston was one of these beta males who looked to submit to the authority of women and looked to give women power because he was afraid of taking the leadership role, afraid of taking his power, because had he been a man who was confident in taking his power, he would have gotten his patent for his uh, lie detector and became wealthy. He would have gone out here and he would have been out here promoting many of his theories and he would have gone out here and basically made Wonder Woman into his own publishing division instead of selling it to DC Comics. No, he would have been out here being the face of much of his business, and he would have gone out here and built on things instead of trying to promote deviancy to young women. This is where William Moulton Marston showed that he wasn't a man, but he showed us all he was one of the world's first manginas looking to go out here and pander to women, hoping to create covert contracts with them, hoping to give them a pass for their own irresponsible, reckless, and egregious behaviors, and basically overwhelming people like his wife and his mistress, giving them power over his home because he was afraid to take that power because according to his Dick's theory, it was all about the dominance, inducement, submission, and compliance. But sadly, he forgot all about the leadership of a man, the natural role that God has given men. And sadly, because he doesn't never really understood the God-given role of a man, he was a man in crisis. And again, while he was a great intellectual who wrote many books, his foundation for much of his work never really came from the Bible, and that's why he went from being a man to becoming one of the world's greatest men in crisis. Now, the second person in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Elizabeth Holloway Marston, the wife of William Moulton Marston. And Elizabeth Holloway Marston was born Sadie Elizabeth Holloway in 1893 on the Isle of Man, which was situated between Ireland and, and Great Britain. Now, Sadie Elizabeth Holloway basically started on the road to becoming a woman in crisis due to the way she behaved when she was young, because she was a textbook example of what many in the black community call a masculine woman. Now, Sadie Elizabeth Holloway was one of these masculine women who believed that she could be the equal of a man, and in some cases the superior of a man, and oftentimes appeared to be very aggressive when she was young, like when her brother was being attacked by two bullies, and she leapt on top of them and smashed their heads into the pavement. And in another incident, she came to her mother's rescue from a drunkard neighbor, fighting him off with a stick. And all of these traits basically show that Sadie Elizabeth Holloway was one of these masculine women who basically looked to subjugate, dominate, and control men. And this is where Sadie Elizabeth Holloway eventually met William Marston in the eighth grade, and the two of them basically became friends because William Marston is possibly was one of these beta males, and oftentimes beta males are attracted to masculine women because masculine women have the power that they are afraid to go out here and take as a man, and because these women have the power that they are afraid to take as a man, Oftentimes, these men love to stand in their shadows, and oftentimes, these men like to be led by these kinds of women. And this is basically the start of the codependent relationship that William Marston had with Sadie Elizabeth Holloway. And as she grew up, eventually, she started to attend Mount Holyoke College. And as she attended Harvard's Women Only Sister School, she became one of the suffrage era's rebel new women, women who went out here and did not want to submit to a male authority figure in a husband, and went out here and pursued 
higher education and employment away from their families, believing that they had more to offer to the world than childbirth and homemaking. And this is where Sadie Elizabeth Holloway started to become a, a different woman and again started to focus on her different hobbies like playing field hockey, singing in the chorus, and participating in the Philosophy Cub, and writing for the student magazine. And she had a fondness for Sappho, the ancient Greek poetess from the Isle of Lesbos, which makes me believe that she possibly was, had a different sexual orientation than, the, than being heterosexual. And this is where Sadie Elizabeth Holloway eventually continued to pursue the fight for women's suffrage and had a great focus on for, femi for suffrage and also believed in standing up for women and again had, had an inspiration for these all-female Amazon warrior tribes and as she had this fascination with this and the, and the whole concepts of Amazons eventually she was still out here looking to again be on her own without the support of a man and as she was looking to go out here and pursue her own quest to be her own woman, she eventually wanted to go to law school, but her father refused to support her. And he, he said that as long as I have money to keep you in Abrams, you will stay home with your mother. However, because, Eliz because um, Sadie Elizabeth Holloway basically was out here and was making her own money, eventually she started to raise money to get the hundred dollars to go to law school and went to law school on her own. And as this masculine woman was out here on her own, she quickly went out here and found the perfect beta male to be with, William Marston. And as she married William Marston, she then took his name and became Elizabeth Holloway Marston and kept her last name, I found to be interesting, but changed her first name, again showing how she wanted to have power, and again didn't really like the tradition of changing her name, but changed it because it's the tradition. She said, as for names, we stuck with either our father's name or our husband, so you chose the one that you liked the best, and there's no such thing as in a civilization as having your own name, so this is possibly why she changed her name from Sadie to Elizabeth to spite her father, and again got involved with this beta male because this beta male would allow her to have power in the relationship, and as he would allow her to have power in the relationship, he would be the one who would submit to her, and again, masculine women like men who they can go out here and get to submit to them, and this is why Elizabeth Holloway Marston got involved with William uh, Moulton Marston, who was looking to again get into a covert contract with his wife, whereas he would allow her to have the power in the relationship in order for him to get, and he would also support her feminist causes, uh, as long as he had a chance to go out here and be able to participate in his sexual deviancy. This is the covert contract that these two had in their codependent marriage. As long as William Moulton Marston could go out here and participate in his sexual deviancy and go out here and explore his sexual deviancy, he would allow his wife to have power and go on her quest for empowerment. And again, this is the type of dysfunctional relationship that manginas have with the women they get involved with. They only allow women to have power so they can get a pass for their own irresponsible, reckless, and egregious behaviors. And as this, as they got married, they then went on, and both Elizabeth Marston and William Holton Marston continued pursuing their educations, with Elizabeth Marston going to law school while William Moulton Marston was struggling as related to his advanced degrees. Now, they both got degrees in 1918, and after law school, Dr. Marston went for his Harvard PhD, while Elizabeth Marston enrolled for an MA at Harvard Sister School, Radcliffe, and they both were sharing classes and professors, and William Moulton Marston eventually got a teaching position, but Elizabeth Moulton Marston couldn't really go but so far, and she was, uh, uh, as related to um, getting further in her education due to the sexism at the time that was ironically going on, and while Elizabeth was having a hard time, again, go, trying to go to school, she was selling soap for Lever Brothers, selling Life Boy soap, and that basically inspired some of the phrase turning that was in the Wonder Woman dialogue because one time she said that, oh, 
the woman didn't want to buy Lifebuoy because it smells like a hospital. And then she said, you mean a hospital smells like Lifebuoy? So, um, this is what learned to the, that, that whole phrase turning in early Golden Age Wonder Woman comics. And Elizabeth, Mol and Elizabeth Moulton Marston continued to work. I mean, Elizabeth Holloway Marston continued to work. And again, she continued to work at all kinds of jobs while her husband worked on getting his doctorate. And she also even filled in for him when he didn't feel like delivering a lecture because he, again, was a submissive beta male and she was a masculine woman. And as a masculine woman, she wanted to go out here and be able to have the same power as a man. And she wanted to have that power even though she was struggling to try to be on the same level as a man. And in 1927, she got pregnant. And what was really interesting is that at 35 years old, she was working as a senior editor in Encyclopedia Britannica. And while she was pregnant, William Moulton Marston wanted her to quit at the job to have the baby. But the whole thing is she went into labor three days later. And then eventually, after she had her child, quickly went back to work and basically wanted to be the one who was leading the family. And that was very interesting to me because it showed me that she was not a woman looking to submit to a man. She was not looking to go out here and work with a man towards building a family. No, she wanted to be the head of the family. And when I look at, at Elizabeth Holloway Marston, she reminds me a lot of many of the independent black women out here. She was looking to be the breadwinner in the family. Basically, I believe because she believed she could not trust any man to lead because I believe she could not trust her father to go out here and lead the family. And I believe these daddy issues were the main reason why she went out here and chose William Moulton Marston to be the man that she wanted to marry because she felt like she could get more power and control over William Moulton Marston. And that's the reason why she got involved with William Moulton Marston because she, again, was looking for a man to control. Moreover, she was looking for a man to be the one who she could have all the power over. And William Moulton Marston being a beta male who really was not interested in leading, not interested in building. I mean, he basically gave away a patent for the polygraph that he had invented. He was not really active in promoting his disc theory, even though he had gotten a doctorate in it. I mean, he really was a weak man who was staying at home with her child, and he was basically like a pookie in some ways. And as he was sitting and being the pookie and wasn't working, what had happened was Elizabeth Moulton Marston had m moved in another one of her students into their home, Olive Byrne. Now, Olive Byrne basically was a woman that allowed Elizabeth Holloway Marston to be able to participate in her sapphic um, desires for women and be a partner that she would be able to participate in her sapphic desires and also allow William Moulton Marston to have a partner to be his side piece. So what was happening here was that because William Moulton Marston was a weak leader, he created a, a relationship that was becoming a sexually deviant relationship. And again, Elizabeth Holloway Marston was basically William Moulton Marston's partner in crime as related to this deviant and very taboo relationship at the time. And this is what led to their whole family going to become a family in crisis because it was led by a dysfunctional man in crisis and supported by a woman in crisis who wasn't looking to be the helpmeet that submitted to the man, but wanted to be the head of the family and the breadwinner. And when I look at, again, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, she really reminds me a lot of the strong, independent black women who have the pookie who's staying at home. And when I look at their model for their um, early relationship, it really reminds me of the black woman who had the good job and was driving the, the, the car. And then pookie gets the car in the middle of the day while she goes to work. And it really reminds me of all of the dysfunction we see with a lot of black relationships. And that further exp becomes more dysfunctional as, she, as their relationship goes from monogamous to polyamorous. And this polyamorous relationship is one of the most disturb is, is one of those ones that shows how Elizabeth Holloway Marston was basically William Moulton Marston's partner in a relationship in crisis. Now, the third and final historical woman in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Olive Byrne. 
And Olive Byrne was the so-called domestic partner of William Moulton Marston and Elizabeth Holloway Marston, and was co considered to be the inspiration for the aesthetic look of the iconic DC Comics character, Wonder Woman. However, Olive Byrne was on the road to becoming a woman in crisis due to being raised by a radical feminist, Ethel Byrne, who was the sister of another legendary feminist, Margaret Sanger, who ushered in the era of sexual promiscuity by promoting the whole idea of contraception and birth control. Now, Olive Byrne wound up on the road to becoming a woman in crisis at early on because her mother, Ethel Byrne, wanted to protect them from an abusive father and decided to send her and her brother to live with their grandparents. And by sending them to live with their grandparents, this really d messed up Olive Byrne's whole upbringing because without her parents there to give her any sort of nurturing or any sort of guidance or even bond with them, this made it where she was starting on the road to becoming a w woman in crisis. And she was on the road to becoming a woman in crisis because she had no semblance of family structure. Now this got worse in 1914 when her grandparents passed away and she was sent to a Catholic orphanage. And as she was sent to this Catholic orphanage, she lived there from the time she was six years old until she was 16 and didn't even know who her mother was until her mother, uh, Ethel Byrne, had her legendary hunger strike. And this was the first time she actually met Margaret Sanger, her aunt, and her mother, Ethel Byrne. And that was really sad because it showed how little that these two women cared about this child and basically left this child in an orphanage while they continued to pursue their quest for suffrage and continued to continue their quest to go out here and fight for birth control and contraception. They put, they made that more of a priority than dealing with this child. And again, for Margaret Sanger, this is kind of hypocritical because she was sitting there talking about, oh, how she was trying to stop women from having unwanted children. And here she was with a niece that basically was treated like she wasn't wanted, abandoned in an orphanage. And this was this whole sad part about Ethel Byrne's upbringing that put her on the road to becoming a woman in crisis because finally when the time when her relatives come to see her, they, they, they don't come to see her to nurture her. Basically, they come to indoctrinate her into feminism and that's really the, the, the saddest part about Olive Byrne is that she basically was, induct, was, was not a person who set her, her own direction and course for herself. No, what she was, was was indoctrinated into her mother and her aunt's life's work, which was going out here to promote women's feminism and go out here and promote the idea of sexual promiscuity as related to birth control and their, and their agendas. And as she was, again, used as a tool, sadly, to promote their ideas, this is basically shows how this young girl never had a chance at becoming her own person and basically became a follower of these ideologies and never became her own person and never became her own person. And that was shown when she entered Tufts University studying medicine at her mother's bidding. And as she went and was followed in her mother's footsteps, she had never learned how to, again, be focus and create her own decisions and make her own ideas. No, she had gone out here and just did what her mother and her aunt told her to do, even though they had basically abandoned her when she was younger. And sadly, she was basically just, again, indoctrinated into this feminism and was on this road to becoming a woman in crisis as she was further going on to pursue her higher education. Now, as she entered into the Tufts University, she developed an androgynous appearance with a short Elon crop, which haircut, and was known for being her connection to Margaret Sanger and worked for Margaret Sanger over a Christmas vacation. And her life got worse because she went from working for Margaret Sanger and being exploited by Margaret Sanger to being exploited by William and Elizabeth Moulton Marston 
in 1925 when she was a senior in Tufts University. Now, Olive Byrne met William and Elizabeth Marston and they made her their research assistant and even took her, went to her sorority to do some research where William Marston basically was using research to cover for his uh, sexual deviancy where he wanted to watch the sorority girls have their baby party and wanted to watch the freshman girls be dressed in baby's clothes and treated like children and also wanted to go out here and perform experiments on her and the other girls. So while Olive Byrne thought she was becoming her own women as a feminist, she couldn't see how she was being exploited by William Marston and how she went from one predator, Margaret Sanger, to another one, William Marston and his wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston. And as she went out here and became a part of William Marston and Elizabeth Holloway Marston's um, group, what happened is she then became a part of their, of their relationship. And as she became a part of their relationship after her graduation, she then began to begin a doctoral program for psychology, but then had to drop out because she was having William Marston's first child, um, Moulton Pete Marston, and again, had that child as not a wife in a, in a relationship, but was in what he was calling a polyamorous relationship, but it really was, had nothing to do with anything as related to any sort of poly anything because he had never really made her a wife. No, he was out here just again having a, uh, Olive Byrne on the side. And not only was William Marston having Olive Byrne on the side, Elizabeth Holloway was also having relations with Olive Byrne and she was having relations with Olive Byrne because this allowed her an opportunity to explore her sapphic desires because Elizabeth Holloway Marston basically was exploring a lot of sapphic sexuality, also known as lesbianism, and she basically was looking to do this as she was having her relationship with, uh, with, with, Rick, with William Moulton Marston, who was a beta male who was looking to submit to um, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, and all three of them participated in a deviant sexual relationship at the time, and again participated in this deviant sexual relationship because this was not a polygynous relationship. And if you want to hear more about polygyny, you go over to Ringo TV Reactions or Ringo TV Raw's channel. He talks in depth about polygyny. And again, under polygyny, a man marries more than one woman, but that woman has the title, esteemed title of a wife. And that wife basically is someone who has her own space and will have intimate relations with that man by himself at one time. It's not like what William Moulton Marston was doing when he was out here with Elizabeth Holloway and Olive Byrne having both women and another woman at the same time. Again, he was basically in naked having sex with all three, all two, and in some cases, three of these women at the same time. And this is where his relationship goes to become sexual deviancy. And again, what, what the Marstons were doing was taking advantage of this young woman who really had no sense of self, no understanding of self, and because they had no understanding of self or understanding of who they, she was, she basically was out here being exploited by William Marston sexually and was being exploited by um, Elizabeth Marston sexually and economically because she was made to be the one who would care for all of the children while Elizabeth Marston worked and was the um, de facto head of the family. Meanwhile, William Marston was basically the pookie of the whole relationship, sitting in the back doing nothing after he lost his job at Tufts University. And after he lost his job at Tufts University, she began working as a staff writer at Family Circle and working under fam at, at the family circle, ironically, as she was participating in this deviant relationship, giving advice to women about how to have a traditional family 
and was out here working with William Marston as he was creating his Wonder Woman character and even used her connections to go out here and create an opportunity for himself as related to getting Wonder Woman to the marketplace because it was an article in Family Circle that he was a part of that where he talked about comic books being a great place of reading for girls but in actuality again he was manipulating his uh, um, um, uh, other woman um, Olive Byrne so he could go out here and get that opportunity to get his comic presented and as he got his comic presented he was working with Olive Byrne to create the Wonder Woman character a character that he basically got inspired to create as related to he and his wife's whole ideas of feminism his his wife his ideas of sexual devi deviancy as related to bondage and domination and also drew inspiration from ideas from pornography at the time and also drew inspiration from ideas from his symbolic bondage where he symbolized instead of his, his so-called marriage with a ring on the finger of his wives no he didn't put a ring on the finger of his wives he put a bracelet cuff on their arms and he put a bracelet cuff on their arms to symbolize their bondage to him and connection to him and this was their symbol of their quote-unquote marriage but it really was not any sort of marriage and it wasn't any sort of marriage because again he was having both women at the same time and neither of the women were looking to help meet his needs because he did not want to be the leader and head of that family no he did not look to be the leader or head of that family no he was looking to find a woman to be someone he could subjugate and submit to and because he was looking to go out here and look for a woman to subjugate and submit to what he was looking to do was go out here and be the one who could just lay up under a woman so in some ways William Moulton Marston was basically a hooky as related to the early 20th century and was an archetype for a pookie because he went from being a man who was out here looking to again build a career and a life and could have built great wealth but instead looked to lay under a woman and wanted to go out here and use a woman to go out here and build his career on with the Wonder Woman character trying to make the whole narrative of strong women but in actuality he was dealing with one woman who was just masculine and domineering which was his wife Elizabeth Holloway Marston and he was looking at a gullible naive young woman Olive Byrne who did not even know who she was and again basically didn't have any semblance of self because she had been indoctrinated into feminism by her mother who basically had abandoned her at a young age and many and when I look at Olive Byrne she again re resembles a lot of many of the dysfunctional traits of today's modern women who basically were abandoned in daycare never really nurtured never really cared for and their mothers basically steered them into careers to so they could go out here and have the big job like like and go out here and live that big time lifestyle but then live hollow lives where they get exploited by predators like a William Marston who basically exploited her as related to things and again like the modern woman gets exploited by the corporate boss who she submits to I see a lot of parallels between Olive Byrne and today's modern woman I mean Olive Byrne and today's modern woman are very similar in that they basically are women who basically just go out here and don't have any sense of self or understanding of self and because they don't have any understanding of self they go out here believing that they are empowered women when in actuality they have no power at all and they have no real power over anything in their lives and Olive Byrne basically went from being under an, an, an abusive home to be abandoned and then to an orphanage then being indoctrinated into feminism exploited by a predatory William Marston and then when William Marston died what she was was under Elizabeth Holloway Marston in that in a, in a sapphic relationship that was originally a poly polyamorous relationship which was not polygyny again polygyny is completely different because the women have roles the women are accountable to a man who is leading them 
But in this deviant relationship she had, she was basically a woman in crisis, and the woman in crisis that was the saddest of them all, because she really never had any chance to go out here and develop her own identity and develop her own sense of self, because it's really ironic because, again, these two, these feminists she was a part of, they all talked about being independent women, but they subjugated Olive Byrne and exploited her at all sides, showing me how these feminists really were not about empowering any women, but taking power for themselves. And this is sadly what led to Olive Byrne being a woman in crisis who never got to be her own woman. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to many women becoming dysfunctional, like Olive Byrne and Elizabeth Holloway Marston, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers, like Smashworth, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to go out here and learn how men like William Moulton Marston become extremely dysfunctional, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com, and you can also pick up Manginas. They look like men, but they act like ladies. And if you want to see a counterpoint to the Wonder Woman character, you can pick up the books of the Isis and Esteem series, not to mention the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find these books at other online booksellers, I like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle, all about Marilyn. Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get all about Marilyn in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.